Hey guys, thanks for clicking on that thumbnail and thanks for watching my videos. Today we got an easy pour, what I consider easy pour, easy money guys. So, pour in a 28 by 24 foot garage, two bay garage. The concrete floor slopes two inches from the back to the front. Right now T and I are just getting started on it. The guys are, the guys are right on the same job. They're down in the basement finishing up that pour. They'll be up here in just a second, but we decided to get started on this pour because the truck was already here and they didn't need us down there anymore. I got about probably a six and a half, seven slump. That's what's good thing about using that water reducer. You know, the high range water reducer lets us pour a little bit looser slump without affecting the strength of the concrete. So we, we use that stuff every day. We pour concrete every day too. If if concrete's your thing, guys, then please go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I'm putting out a couple videos a week trying to teach you guys how to pour and finish concrete. Oh, look at that mess that just came down the chute. We always, always seem to come up with a concrete ball or a dry ball or whatever you guys call them. Let me know down in the comments what you guys call them. It seems like just about every day. Never fails. I don't know if they just pound in the mud into the truck too fast or dry load in the nose or whatever but they never seem to be able to completely mix up the concrete without getting one of those balls we're pouring actually four different floors today on this one job we've we got the basement we're doing we've got the garage we're doing here we got a breezeway slab we got a an addition slab out back that's going to be a bedroom all different levels all on the same job so we got about 31 and a half total yards coming now the garage itself was five inches thick so the garage figured around ten and a half yards so we're actually on to the second truck right now and you can see the third truck in the background getting ready we used some of the second truck in the basement and then about two-thirds of him three-quarters of him in the garage. We're going to need a little bit out of that third truck to finish the garage. You can see the rhythm Darren and I are in when we screed like that. It's just like, like we've done that our whole lives, huh? T that's Tia on the bull float. Tia will be going back to college here pretty soon, so everybody, you know, say hi to Tia before she takes off and goes back to college for her senior year. Eric, the one guy in the white shirt too, he's a summer help. He's a school teacher. He uh, he's worked for me for over 20 years, but he teaches school and he coaches varsity baseball. So for us, you know, when I say easy, easy poor, easy money, that's because what I mean by that is, you know, we because we do this every single day. It is easy to us. We have a certain method we use. We have certain techniques we use. We all have a high level of skill when it comes to pouring and finishing concrete. So when we all work together like this, it actually is quite easy. And it's just what we do. I mean, what do you do for work? And do you think it's easy because you've been doing it a long time? Or do you think it's still difficult for you to go in to work every day and do what you do? We really don't think it's difficult doing what we do. Now, the work is hard, that's for sure. I mean, I'm not saying it's not hard work, but doing the work together is actually makes it pretty easy. You can see how we screed there. It's like we've been doing that forever and ever, like I said. We don't typically use a vibrating screed or a power screed on floors that have slope to them. We, we really like screeding stuff by hand. We know how accurate we can be by hand. I mean, I think we're pretty accurate with a vibra screed too. Probably within, I don't know, as accurate as you can be, I guess. A quarter of an inch in 12, 14 feet, however long the rod is. Maybe an eighth of an inch. But we're really accurate when it comes to screeding by hand like that. How, you, how do you guys like that little crane method with the winch on it? In the remote to drop that trowel down and pick it back up put it in the truck you guys all like that 
And you can see all the slabs we're doing now. Tia's out back there hand finishing that. Luke and Darren are down in the basement getting ready to, to power trial that a little bit more. We're hand finishing the breezeway slab and that back slab and then we're power troweling the garage and the house. Even though Eric's summer help, he's he can do everything we can do. He can finish, he can screed, he can he can pretty much do it all. He worked for me full time at one point. Now he's hitting it for the first time. We call that floating the concrete. I've got I teach you how to power trial finish floors in the concrete underground. That's in the link down below in the video if you want to learn how to power trial, learn how to pour and screed like us. All that stuff's in the concrete underground, guys. You can check that out. So right now he's floating the concrete, and that's the first hit. Usually we don't get on the concrete until we can walk on it and barely, I mean barely, sink in at all when we float it like this. It all comes down to timing, just like everything with concrete. Finishing is about timing, knowing the timing. What kind of day it is, is it in direct sun, is it in shade, is it, are the temperatures hot out, are the temperatures cool outside, how far did it take for the concrete truck to get to the job. All those factors come into play when you're finishing concrete. And you really learn that stuff from experience. Um, mostly, it's nice to have hands-on experience, but it's hard to get hands-on experience sometimes. So that's why I developed the Concrete Underground, so I can help train people. And you can get access to me for questions. You can get my phone number. You can get my email so we can go over whatever you need to go over and learn. Tia's become quite a finisher, too. She can run a power trial. She can finish by hand. Um, this is her third summer doing concrete, so she's become quite an asset to the company. She's a big, big help when it comes to pouring concrete. You can see how easy it is to run a power trial. Once you learn the movements of the power trial, it, it's really easy to run. If one, at be, In the beginning, it's kind of like the power trial runs you. <laughs> it controls you, but after you learn... How to control it it's really simple it's easier to push than a lawnmower really <laughs> so now what eric's going to do is he's going to let that sit for a while because it's kind of kind of cloudy and it was actually we're actually down by the ocean it's kind of foggy out today a little bit so he's going to let that sit you can see that's we've hit that a couple times with a hand trial already luke's down there with the finish blades on hitting the basement floor that little breezeway up top to the right We've hit that two or three times with a hand trial. That's pretty smooth already. They're probably going to end up putting some type of flooring over the breezeway and probably tile or something like that. And then the same with that back piece. Now you can see the difference when they kick the float blades off and you start using the finish blades, how much smoother it gets with just one pass on the power trial. I don't know if you notice or not, but Eric's when he hits it with a power trial this time he's going the opposite or he, he's changed direction 90 degrees he's going let's say what I call north to south now where before he was going east to west this is just one of the tricks we use to help keep the slab flat make sure there's no dips and humps in it typically the way we screed we don't have any trouble with dips and humps anyway it's usually pretty darn flat You can see Luke's up out of the basement now. He's waiting for that thing to dry a little bit more. We'll cut a groove. You see right in front of Darren there, right in front of you? Right across that doorway, it tends to want to crack on those inside corners across the door. So we'll cut a groove across there. Or we'll saw a saw joint right there. And that usually controls any cracking off those, off those corners of the foundation. Nothing worse than seeing a crack right there in front of the door. But for us, all working together like this on the same job with all these different slabs, this is a pretty easy day, what we consider easy. You know, it just, with everybody working together, it, it makes it really easy. Now, could I have just left Darren, Luke, and Eric on this job and I could have gone and done something else with Tia? I, I mean, I could have. 
But since it was a Friday, we didn't really feel like doing anything else other than just getting this one job done. It was actually, it's hard to tell in the video, but it was about 95 degrees out here today. Real, 100, about 100% humidity, so it was real sticky, uncomfortable weather to work in. And quite honestly, I just didn't feel like going and doing anything else. We're all set for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the following week anyway. Those jobs are all set and ready to go, so it's not like there was big, a big rush to go get something else ready. So for you guys that do concrete, let me know if you think it's easy. Not not the work, not the actual physical part of it, but just just doing the jobs, getting your job done, getting the concrete poured and finished. I mean, is it is it easy for you to do that? And if it is, then do you consider it easy money? Um, I mean, nothing nothing about physical hard work is really easy. That's not what I mean, but just what you do because you're so good at what you do do you think it's easy let me know down in the comments guys so again thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet like and share these videos guys it helps me get them out to more people and so more people can learn about concrete and we'll see you on the next one